Conducting chemical experiments at home is indeed a risky task. Several things could go wrong, putting you and those around you in danger. Because of this, I generally don't recommend doing chemistry at home, especially if you don't have experience or training in the field of chemistry. However, chemistry is a fascinating science. And who am I to judge if someone wants to do cool stuff at home? But please, always be cautious and remember that safety should be your top priority when doing chemistry, especially at home. One of the biggest risks that people often overlook is the production of harmful fumes during experiments. Breathing in these fumes can be seriously bad for your health. In this video, I will show you a homemade fume hood that I built to do chemistry at home in a safer way. So let's start with the basics. How does a fume hood actually work? Well, it's simple. A fume hood is just a chamber attached to a fan that constantly removes the air from the inside, preventing the accumulation of dangerous fumes. That means that all you need is some kind of box with a hole on one side and a fan. Let's take a closer look at my fume hood. First off, the materials. My hood is made from cheap particle board, some plexiglass and PVC pipe. It has a powerful 5 inch fan and an LED light. Building the fume hood was actually really easy. I just used some screws to attach everything together. The hardest part though was opening the hole for the fan because I had to open several tiny holes and use a saw to cut between them. Then I put the pipe through the hole and secured everything in place with duct tape. I also added a tiny activated charcoal filter, but I'll be honest here, I don't think this filter is really doing much at all. Here's a piece of advice. Even with professional fume hoods, the actual fumes do not disappear. They are just taken outside by a fan. Professional setups usually utilize filters to try and remove some of the toxic substances before releasing the fumes into the atmosphere, but not everything is removed. So make sure to place the outlet of the fume hood in a spot where it won't harm anybody. Now, talking about the size, this fume hood is 80 cm wide, 90 cm tall, and 50 cm deep. This gives me plenty of space to work with, while still being compact enough to fit in my home lab. For the ventilation system, I use an axial fan, which effectively pulls the fumes out and away from the workspace. It has a capacity of 9 square meters per minute, meaning every minute the fan can remove 9 square meters of air from the fume hood. That is 3 times the entire volume of my apparatus. And this is important because the whole idea of a fume hood is to prevent the accumulation of dangerous fumes. You need to know the limits of any fume hood that you work with. If you produce more fumes than the fan can actually handle, you're in trouble. Having a fume hood, even a professional one, doesn't make you invulnerable. Nor does it mean that you can conduct any experiment you want. For example, I am really reluctant to do things such as distilling sulfuric acid or working with bromine in this fume hood given the means that I currently have. We need to know our limitations and do the best we can with the tools we have. So after all that explanation, let's go to the important part. We need to see this thing in action. To do so, I'll need to produce some fumes, so I am using these mosquito coils for that. So first, I cut the coils and put them into a beaker to light them inside the fume hood. And we can see how the fumes are sucked by the fan and taken outside of the room. There are some places where the fumes tend to accumulate, but after a couple of seconds, all the fumes are removed with no issue whatsoever. Also, there's no smell in the room, so that's a good sign.
I also made a test where I placed the beaker just outside the fume hood, and we can see how the air is getting inside. This means that when the fume hood is on, there's a low chance of dangerous fumes escaping from the apparatus. And there you have it, a simple, effective, and affordable way to stay safe while doing chemistry at home. Just remember, safety first.